Hi there, I'm uh, Reverend Tim Nethercott, chaplain for the United Church of Canada at the University of Calgary, Mount Royal, and SAIT. Uh, I'm with the YYC Campus Ministry. Uh, we work closely with the Lutheran Campus Ministry to offer open Christian community to students and young adults. Open Christian community means that participation is based on values, not on beliefs. We don't require or expect that participants have any particular religious or spiritual beliefs. If you're willing to help build a community where people learn to love and be loved, uh, you're welcome to join us. Our community has included practicing members of other faiths, as well as people with no particular faith background and people who don't care about any of that and just want to be friends. This video is supposed to be about me, so I guess I guess so that you can tell whether you might be comfortable associating with our ministry. So here goes. I call myself a religious mongrel. I was raised as a very conservative, uh, one might say fundamentalist, Christian. I loved the community, but wrestled with their beliefs, particularly the belief that the Bible is inerrant. That means uh, without errors. My family and myself uh, suffered with mental illness. Uh, my church's understanding of mental illness came from an overly literal reading of the Bible. We were taught that mental illness resulted from unconfessed sin and that we had to repent and be healed. Uh, we were to stay away from psychological professionals because they would undermine our faith. This was a disaster for us. So in my teenage years, in spite of the fact that I loved my faith and my church community, I began to believe that it wasn't healthy for me. I was not ready to give up on Christianity. Uh, I went to an evangelical college in the United States. Uh, while I was there, I read the poetry of Thomas Merton, a Roman Catholic monk, and uh, heard something that I needed. I didn't know it then, but the something I heard was sacramental theology, uh, basically a way of understanding God's presence in the world. I went to Merton's monastery in Kentucky to study his work. I loved the monastic way of life and subsequently checked into two monasteries in Britain. Uh, while I loved the Roman Catholic Church, I also encountered things there that I couldn't live with. So, once again, I moved on, but now moving on meant ceasing to identify as a Christian. Uh, I didn't have trouble with God. I've never really had trouble with God uh, believing or not believing. Uh, basically, I've always thought that our ideas are not able to get a hold of God. Uh, for me, the words and the ideas about God are interesting but inadequate. Uh, God is a mystery that I am living in. This is what I think. Uh, I believe, or perhaps I should say I hope, I have a communion with this mystery that is deeper than words and concepts, and I am satisfied with that. So I still believed in God in this way. From Britain, I came back to Canada and began praying for God to leave me alone. One day I headed out to my classes at the University of Toronto. I got to a place where I could go left or I could go right, and it occurred to me that I no longer had a God voice in the back of my head uh, leading me in one direction or another, and that I was finally free of God. Uh, that marked the end of my being a Christian. I told my friends that I had been converted to the world. I made the most of it. Uh, I did lots of drugs and did all the stuff that I wasn't supposed to do as a Christian. Uh, it was a fine experience. <laughs> Uh, I worked at, the, at a publishing house that produced avant-garde Canadian literature, and I forgot that I had ever had a religious life. I was still interested in spiritual things, and I tried all kinds of stuff, mostly body-oriented therapies and wellness modalities. It was great, and I still use the stuff I learned in that chapter of my life. But then I had a crisis. <laughs> uh, I had to forgive someone, and I couldn't figure out how. Then I remembered that my religion had been all about forgiveness. I went back to it. There were some useful things there. I allowed myself to have uh, intuitions about a different kind of divinity, and I began to relate to God more as mother, a habit that has stuck with me. But I could not go back to my religion. I went to Japan 
to teach English and save money for grad school. I was about 30 years of age by that time. I reckoned I'd be a social worker. Religion was all I'd ever really been good at. <laughs> and uh, social work, uh, in my mind, was uh, the closest thing that I could study at a university. Uh, besides, I was bored without a religion. It was like the world was in black and white instead of being in color. Religion, for me, uh, raises the stakes around everything and makes uh, the small pieces of your life, uh, puts them in a cosmic context and raises the stakes uh, all around in a person's life. So I practiced uh, uh, Buddhism while I was in Japan. After a couple of years, I went to uh, Thailand to work in a refugee camp, uh, and I practiced another form of Buddhism while I was there. Uh, this was great. Uh, I love the psychology of Buddhism in particular. I woke up one morning when I was in Thailand and I thought, I'll never really get this new religion, a new religion to me. Uh, my soul, I thought, has been uh, shaped by Christianity. So no point in starting at the bottom of the mountain again. I'll go back to Christianity and reinvestigate where I came from. I knew that a lot of the things that I enjoyed in, uh, in Buddhism were also an, uh, uh, present in, on the Christian path as well. So I came back to Canada and went to a United Church seminary and began studying what people call liberal or progressive Christianity. And I was blown away by the experience uh, for me, at least, it was the most uh, compelling, profound uh, life stuff I had ever encountered. It was like finding myself in a field of rich soil and discovering that deep down, I was a farmer. Finally, a faith community that embraced LGBTQ people. I couldn't join a faith community that didn't. That was a make or break issue for me. So the United Church of Canada became my home and has been ever since. Uh, being in ministry has been tremendously life-giving for me. And in a way, uh, that's what the spiritual journey is about, coming into contact with the life in life. The, the practice of religion uh, has never overcome my mental illness. I still have it. But my faith has brought tremendous meaning to the struggle and the suffering of that mental illness. And that is a kind of healing. So, blessings on your journey, and uh, get in touch if I can help.